Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy, novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell Air Bubble. The bubble. All right. My I best approximation. This is a spell that lets you breathe where otherwise you would not be able to breathe, correct? Yep. Similar to water breathing. But slightly different, because this one lets you breathe in space! Uh, Alright, well, I'm going to ask you if water breathing would also let you do that. But uh, first, tell us what this does. Alright, this is a second level conjuration spell. Uh, it takes an action to cast. Uh, it lasts 24 hours. Um, you create a spectral globe of water around the head of a willing creature you can see. Uh, it is filled with fresh air that lasts until the spell ends. And we're not going to worry about the logistics of that because who cares? Um, if the creature has more than one head, the globe of air appears around only one of its heads. Um, so if a creature needs to avoid suffocation, it needs to like... They, that's all it needs is the important bit of it, which I don't know why that text is here. That text didn't need to be included. Um, anyway, at higher levels, you can get uh, an extra person. I'm oh, sorry, two extra globes extra um, for every slot above two. So if you use it as a third, you get three. If you use it as a five or a four, you get five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, it becomes water breathing as a fourth level spell because it's probably your whole party. Um, beyond that, it's like, I guess you can do it as a second level spell if you just want one person. And it's kind of what it does. Because uh, water breathing, if you want, um, since you were going to ask anyway, water breathing is a third level spell. It's a ritual, which is notably way better um because you can spend 10 minutes casting this instead and then you grant 10 willing things the ability to breathe under water until the spell ends so notably it doesn't right. work in space so if you are specifically in space you need air bubble but if you aren't in space water breathing is probably good enough man i i, I feel like that's still open to interpretation i mean does it give you gills like a specific ability to breathe underwater or does it make it just so that you your, your blood stays oxygenated without being able to breathe so it says affected creatures also retain their normal mode of respiration. So I'm inclined to believe that means you're getting a new mode of respiration. It's what I'm inferring. But that's something you can actually talk about with your DM. I think if you're going yeah. into space exploration, you're like, I really don't want air bubble. That sounds dumb. But they probably can be <laughs> like, yeah, water breathing is fine. <laughs> um, all right. Now, back to the thing with uh, more than one head. So like an Etten, uh, you cast air bubble on one of its heads. Now... Is the whole creature okay? Or yep. Is... All right, I, so... I definitely stuttered my way through it, but you only need one head to avoid suffocation, assuming it shares the same respiratory system, which a lot of those words just lead to more questions. Because now I just want to find the two-headed creature that has two separate sets of respiratory systems <laughs> um, in the same body, just because that seems silly. And, like, why would you do that? <laughs> if Imagine there's, like, a Hydra has as many sets of lungs as it does heads and you get into like the body just bloating over into these weird gangrenous, uh, gangrenous like blotchy lung spaces inside its torso. I don't know. I think it's wild. I'm thinking um, conjoined twins. They have a shared respiratory system, right? Well, I mean, it depends on where they're conjoined. I mean, That's a great point. If you know, uh, some, uh, You've seen those like babies with the heads fused together and like yes, two I respiratory have. systems there. I don't know. Sure. So the know, how much fun bubbles. that would be to play. Listen, I don't. I can't think of the top of my head any player characters that no. have ever needed to care about this. The only monster I can think of immediately is are well, there are two. It's the Hydra and the Eden, which is you know you already mentioned one. I mentioned the other, uh, but there are other multi-headed monsters. Um, I think it's silly to see. I, I think there's a really fun image being painted there of like the oh, <laughs> look at the Hydra with the one little head in the air bubble, and the rest <laughs> of the heads just kind of flailing about. And I think that there's a, an amount of silliness to it that I get. I'm a big fan of. Um, but I mean. This is just this is just water breathing with extra steps, right? Like this is just worse than yeah. water breathing with extra steps because, like, well, I mean, unless water breathing doesn't work in space and you happen to be, I mean, this is sure this is one of we, we already talked about this briefly uh, when we were talking about create spell jamming helm. Uh, this is like the other spell in the in the spell jammer book, right? Uh, I yeah, there's, I, there's I think there's two. only two. If there's only two, then yes. Uh, I don't remember how many there are, but yeah. Uh, if there's only so, two, it's just this and that. And let me tell you, this is not a spell. This definitely could have been a magic item. Uh, I would say this definitely should be a magic item. A little, can you imagine, just like a little? You're talking uh, about the spell jamming helm, right? Oh, I'm talking about both of these spells. I think spell jamming helm absolutely could be a magic item. Yeah. I think air bubble, just like a little, a little bottle that has got like a little bubble wand that you stick in it and you blow it and it sticks on someone's head. That sounds super whimsical and awesome, doesn't it? Let's have that instead of air bubble because we don't. You don't, no I, I disagree. I disagree. If you're going into space 
uh, air bubble sounds like a reasonable spell. Yeah, maybe, maybe it doesn't need to look like an air bubble around your head, but as a means to breathe, I think that's that's spell territory. Can you breathe on the astral plane is a very important question that I should probably didn't have the answer to. Um, so while on the astral plane, according to this little planes, the astral plane by uh, Gravel Mancer, I don't know, the uh, Dumpstat Adventures. Uh, let me see. Breathing. Let's see if they're up on their lore. Uh, I... While on the astral plane, you don't need to worry about breathing food or drink, but that's probably in re like reference to... I would assume it's a reference to astral, pro astral projection. Like, I here's where I, this is the point that I'm trying to make. I don't know if you technically need this. Like, I don't know if rules uh, is written. Not on the you astral can't plane. Breathe on the I'm astral. Just talking about in space. I keep saying in space, but I don't think spell is set in space. I think spell is set on the astral plane. I don't know. I, I, again, I could be wrong. Uh, where is spell jammer set? Google is free though, so we can find out. Um. It uses outer space tropes, oh. vast expanses of interplanetary space. So is interplanetary space the astral? Well, it's interplanetary space. I mean, we know what planets are. Between it, them is space. But like, I, whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's say it is. Let's <laughs> say it is. You are traveling in between uh, different planets or planes. Um. And you need to breathe, and you have to go fix the ship because your ship bubble, I don't know, some part of the outside has to go get fixed. Air bubble yourself and head out. Sure. I guess Other, that's fine. I mean, otherwise, you'd have to, like, hold cast your breath water for... breathing and put your head in a bucket or something. Okay, wait, hold on. You, <laughs> you, that sounds way better than this. That sounds like a super fun time. Like, you just, now it's a really easy solution. It's just everyone gets, like, sealable water bowls that you used to breathe in space. That sounds so much more fun than this. <laughs> that sounds heavy. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, I guess. Of course, I'm not space, you know, no gravity, so. I guess you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'm not convinced this needs to exist. I'm not convinced there's a lot of people that want, like, if I'm going to play Spelljammer, the point of it is, like, high sea astral exploring, right? The planet is to see a bunch of wild, wacky... It's it's the Star Trek thing, right? Where, like, if you're doing an intership battle, that's, like, its own thing where you jump between them, and then maybe this comes into play once or twice. But most of it's going to be going where no man's gone before, going to see the wilds of Mount Slet or the wilds of the, the Beast Realms or whatever, and, you know, voyaging into the varying uncharted depths of the abyss and hitting a bunch of other you know all stars along the way and finding a bunch of weird wacky demi planes and you know going into new places no one's ever seen before with weird big alien creatures and mind flayers eating children right like that's the whole point of a spell jammer it's big wacky wild whimsical adventures and i just i really don't want to care about air level i'm gonna be honest if i'm playing in that game i really don't want to have to deal with the logistics of it i think a lot of the logistics you have to say we're not going to worry about this because the moment you start to worry about this everything starts to unravel um like like even how I prefaced it, like, I don't want to think about, it gives you a bubble of fresh air, but you're breathing in and out of that bubble. And that air yeah, can't stay that fresh I mean, for long. No, but this, it's magic. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. I'm but, more willing to say the astral plane is magic and don't worry about it than I am to say, take this spell so we can pretend it solves the problem of the astral plane. Like, that's, I, what I, I, that's where I'm more at. My concern is that you have to expend a spell perpetually in order to not die yeah. while you're playing this game. That said, it just feels like a resource tax. Yeah. That said, though, it it could be fun if uh if if you have magical or other means to disable other people's air uh, air bubbles. <laughs> sure. I think there's probably a neat little uh a neat little mini game to be played where like people have got rods of dispel magic they're shooting at each other to blow off their helm so they start <laughs> suffocating. <laughs> like I think that's nifty. Now, granted, you can hold your breath for like what feels like forever in D and D because rounds are six seconds and you get a minute's worth of them for your Constitution modifier. Like it's a minute plus your con mod. Uh, that's how many minutes of breathing you get. So like, or of holding your breath you get. So like. If you can't get yeah, back to the if, boat in a minute with magic, I don't know what to you, tell you. Uh, if, if you have to go go back to, uh, you know, get get your enemy party to expend all their spells on air bubbles, sure. then, uh, yeah, that's that's something. 
Sure. Uh, I mean, it doesn't help that one third gives you three and like one fourth gives you five. So like, it's pretty efficient to get them back and it's pretty costly to take them down. But the, maybe this oh, is a yeah. little mini game where like they pop to arrows. In that case, it's really bad if you can like top <laughs> air bubbles. <laughs> but very fun. There's like there's some fun things to be had here. Um, it is uh, it is available to a lot of classes as well. That's uh, yeah, artificers, druids, rangers, sorcerers, wizards. Basically, anyone who wants it gets it. Yeah. Is that how's that, that compared to water water breathing? Uh, water breathing is for druids, rangers, sorcerers, witters, and artificers. What a surprise! Exactly right. the same list. Oh. Yeah, wow they they really didn't make a whole lot of effort to differentiate these. They didn't make a whole lot of effort in this book, Bob. <laughs> this book is not. <laughs> You're going to hear me complain more more than one occasion about Spelljammer uh, and mainly the books. And it's because the books are well, I think, say low effort to be polite. As far as you know, spells go, I think we've had our second and final opportunity to complain about these. Yeah. I I, I mean, I will say like th this is a spell like Jim, like, or like a distort value. I'm never casting this. I never want to have to cast this. I never want to be in a game where this matters. Unless it's like, again, that fun little mini game that you mentioned where it's mm. like a like a, like a little team capture the fly kind of deal where you're popping each other's air bubbles <laughs> and you're trying to like get people to go back to suff suffocating. I think that's a cute little whimsical scene that feels like if it's right into that kind of a setting. Um, but beyond that specific environment, God, I don't want to waste spell slots on this. You can't even ritual cast yeah. it. Like, they, yeah. at minimum, just slap the ritual tag on this and forget about it. Because then you would be like, okay, yeah, we all. I'm gonna spend the hour for the day. We can all breathe outside in space, and then we can do the fun space adventure. And then it's just like a thing you put on your character sheet that you forget about, like a druid spell you prepare to ritual cast, or a you know a wizard you just slam it in your spell book. You never worry about it ever again. Then it's like you know, it's fairly innocuous. It gives you the feeling of still doing like a protective measure, like water breathing yeah. feels like, right? Like it's a, now we get to explore this. Um, because our wizard, you know, has this prepared, or because our druid uh, prepared this, or not even the wizard doesn't have to have it prepared, just because it's in their spell book, right? That is where this should fit to me. It not being a ritual is a gigantic bummer. That means you actually have to spend your resources on this, and you shouldn't have to spend your resources to play the game. Like, to, when I say play the game, I mean like to get to explore right. a specific setting that you're supposed to explore, right? I don't want to have to spend spell slots to exist and this makes you spend cell slots to exist and that's lame um but beyond that there's like there's a cutesy little fun element to it the multi-headed stuff gives you a lot of fun ideas this is a lot of unnecessary text that i'm really glad is here despite it being definitely very unnecessary uh yeah this feels very much like destroy valley to me as far as like a spell goes it's probably a lot of things that we don't need for the game but i'm yeah i'm happy it's here okay you got a rating for this one I think this isn't as bad as Destroy Value. This is probably a two. Uh, this is a spell that, yeah, it lets it opens a bunch. Like even compared to Water Breathing, this is a second level spell. So this means there will be some instances where, like, okay, two of us have, um, two of us have, two of the three party members have Underwater Breathing already from the race. The third player can just grab Air Bubble, and now you can do Underwater Exploration at third level instead of at fifth level. Sure, well, that seems like a novel know. enough. Purpose whoa, 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 whoa! Does Air Bubble make you more buoyant? Again, I think that's a problem that you don't deal with. Much like the <laughs> does breathing out carbon dioxide cause you issues. I think that's a problem where you say the magic takes care of it and you move forward. <laughs> All right. Well, I, otherwise, I know, there's no but... value here. This is a one. If, yeah. if it is buoyant, if the carbon dioxide is an issue, if you even begin to dive into the logistics of this, it falls apart entirely. So just don't. Like most D&D spells, don't think about the practical physics of this. Just let it happen. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I guess I'll agree with your two. Just just in case I'm ever out in space, then uh, I don't want to have to eat humble pie. Sure. I All think right. the moment at most tables you hit water breathing, this stops being a spell. So, um, yeah, don't like if you're a sorcerer, uh, uh, this isn't for you. If you're an <laughs> artificer, mm -mm, not for you. Uh, but if you're a druid and you only have to prepare it, yeah, sure, whatever, it's fine. All right, that was water breathing. Thank air you, bubble. Sam. Air, that bubble. Was air bubble. That was air bubble. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.